This is Gene Adam, former lead singer of Iced Earth. Be sure to subscribe to Podcast and Stone. And don't forget, join our community on social media. Metal lives. Ladies and gentlemen of the Iced Earth community, welcome to Podcast in Stone. The only podcast 100% dedicated to Iced Mother fucking Earth. Today, I am joined as always, guys, with the incomparable Chuck Hoskins. Chuck, how are you doing this evening, sir? Jason, doing well, my friend. How are you? I'm, I'm really good. This is, uh, is going to be an interesting episode. It's this where, is one of our most requested episodes. It's where we take Ice Earth and we take Blind Guardian. They do the fusion dance. And they become demons and wizards. Today we're going to be talking about their debut self-titled album. Yeah, uh, Demons and Wizards, Chuck. Uh, I might as well just kick it off with um, your thoughts and your kind of introduction to the to Demons and Wizards. Um, I remember hearing about it when it first came out, and I didn't get it right away but i remember going to a record store and it was easily found back then and it's funny i remember the guy talking i remember the the day i bought it there was a guy in the store that was like looking through stuff he's like oh man that's cool do you know that you ever heard of iced earth and i'm like yeah actually i have so i i remember buying it and i'm going to get into my thoughts but I I love the album now, but it was a slow burn for me. It was something that I was, I'm going to call it my Burt Butthurt album because (laughs) I wanted Iced Earth. And I did, I, back then I I put it in and I gave it a listen, but I didn't give it its fair due. And uh, that's something we're going to talk about today. How about you, Jason? That's cool. Um, I, I, I totally discovered Demons and Wizards completely by accident. Um, I think it was a little while after their... I think it was in the same year their second album came out. I just went into one of my local... It's not. It doesn't exist anymore, but it was a, a, a music store called Music Zone. Crap name, I know. But that's what it was called. And it used to always have... It was, the, it was the cheapest store to get heavy metal albums, right? They'd always have a sale. I mean, my friend always joke about the... The uh, they I remember maybe like two thousand and seven they had like the best sale it was called the six 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 sale and everything was six pounds and sixty six pence, like even new releases everything in the metal section was six six six, and it was so cheesy we thought it was hilarious but thanks to that sale I discovered some bands that I kind of kind of let you know took me on my further into my metal kind of uh, music discovery. Bands like Chimera, Trivium, Three Inches of Blood, those kind of bands. So, like, that was kind of like my go-to store for anything like metal back in the day. I'm talking about, yeah, like 2005. They remember coming across the CD, Demons Woods is Touched by Crimson King. I'm talking about the limited edition that came in like a box. It had the eye on the front cover. Do you know what I'm talking yes. about? It had mm-hmm. a hype sticker that says, uh, John Schaefer of Iced Earth joins forces with... Hansi Kirch with Blind Guardian. I was like, oh, awesome. It's got John Schaefer in it. I'm going to gra- grab it. So I just bought it. And yeah, that's kind of my very late introduction to the band. Uh, when it concerns this album, I don't think I, just, I, don't think I really uh, got this album until quite a, maybe 2010, quite later on, because I found it cheap and I just thought, oh, fuck it. I'll get that. I got it. And unlike you, where they both albums are very slow burns, um, and obviously it's only taken me recently now with these reissues to really delve, dig, dig deep into into this first album. And yeah, that's where we can we can uh, go into your overall thoughts of this self-titled Demons and Wizards record, Chuck. Yes. It- it's I, I liked it upon you know it was something I probably gave a spin probably once a year or something like that and uh, I never got the vinyls because they were so expensive 
for the uh, picture disc. And any collectors out there, just so you know, if you look on Discogs, those picture disc finals, if you're looking for the first pressings, are getting way down in price. You can get them both for about 50 now on Discogs, which is a, b- a big difference from, you know, six, eight months ago when it was closer to 100 so that that's cool that if, if you're a completionist and you the picture discs are beautiful if you wanted to add to your collection it's a it's a cool thing anyway um but with the whole hype of demons about a couple weeks ago I was like I'm going to really give this a chance so I started listening to it and like the more I listened to it the more I appreciate Hanzi the more I it's it's got that that touch of touch of ice earth and it's got a touch of an element that i don't know yet which i'm assuming is the uh, <laughs> the guardian side and um uh, it after listening to it just this morning in my car i was like that's got to be my next purchase is blind guardian because i've got to hear more mm-hmm. now do you have any blind guardian in your collection right now jason no i've 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 i, I know very very little um, about Blind Guardian. All I know is Hansi Kirch is a singer, obviously, and uh, everyone goes on about an album called um, Midnight in Middle Earth or something like that. It's called, apparently, it's like, uh, it's it's their, like, you know, fan favourite. Storm Rider Saga. Yeah, yeah. It's, their, it's their, like, fan favourite. So, um, but I've just never, I've never, it's, it's really weird because I've never really, um, really cared for Hansi's vocals and it's really strange because I've you know, I'm a, I'm a guy where my kind of journey into metal kind of went through phases like I went through the new metal phase and the metal core phase and the power metal phase into death metal and I've been, I've, I've been through all the phases but as I've got you know when I, when I got into my like late 20s into my early 30s as I'm now my 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 taste is broadened to the point where it's no longer phases I'm actually just like jumping between bands that I just generally still would love from my whole you know gateway period and beyond kind of thing and it's very i find it very strange for me that i just something about hans's vocals at the time uh just didn't gel with me you know and i'm just like you know i'm, I'm not i'm not denying you know his 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 talent or ability i'm just you know at, at the time it's just like you know, it's not for me you know and i think that's what really took me out of um took me out of these two demons albums originally um, I can safely say I've listened to this album over the last two days I've listened to this album this first Demon's Wizard album uh, three times on three separate occasions and like like you were saying um, yeah um, I'm, I'm, I, it has really it's, it's different being like a, a young kid you know in your like late teens early 20s just you know because me all I wanted was just when I was into getting into metal all I wanted was just heavy Fucking bra, just riffs everywhere, and as you get older, you look for something a bit for a bit more, kind of with more depth and a bit more, um, a bit more meat substance. to it, a bit more substance. And I think listening to this as a thirty-something year old and being a musician myself, I think I've kind of found something there that I didn't, I didn't see or didn't hear back in the day, and I think that goes a long way. Because um, as you grow, your taste grows and stuff like that. So, sure. Um, I, I, I really do. Uh, I'm definitely sold on on Hans as a singer. I think he's incredible on this record. And um, my my big takeaway from this record is that um, somehow John and ha- John and Hansy have created a record that ha- got kind of just like it. It seamlessly blends that European power metal element with the darker American traditional heavy metal that Iced Earth is and kind of just brings them together in such a way you don't you technically it shouldn't work in some regard in my opinion because obviously in my opinion a European power metal is a lot more bombastic and a lot more kind of it's it's on the lighter side. You can cover darker topics, but it's more on the upbeat side. Whereas Ice Earth can can be can go as dark as you can go, really. Burnt Offerings esque, and this album kind of takes all the elements that we love from Ice Earth and throws it 
in the face of what the Europeans are doing with the power metal scene. It just combines it into this crazily just in-your-face heavy metal record. And I kind of think I'm in love with it, Chuck. <laughs> yeah. Usually the super groups type deal, they don't capture their greatness. Right. But I think they truly, again, I can't speak for the Guardian side, but the two of them together has an undeniable chemistry that I'm just now getting aware of. And and I, I am absolutely in love with the, I mean, when I got the vinyls a week ago, I, I can't stop staring at that artwork. It's It's just, they... I've never seen a touched up artwork look so amazing. I'm going to put it to you this way. Now that I've gotten the self-titled Demons reissue on vinyl and I've listened to it, the vinyl version, I think it's my favorite release of 2019 so far. Could be. Yeah. That's, that's a good point. But, um, it's outstanding. I, I can't wait to go into the uh, the uh, track by tracks. Um, a little personnel here. Of course, it's uh, John and Hansi, but uh, it's super short. It's like the shortest personnel I've ever seen for a John Schaefer project. <laughs> yeah, Jim Jim Morris, lead guitar. Yep. Which isn't a surprise, and our old buddy Mark Prater on drums for this project. And, and he fucking slays on this record as well. You know. He, everything Mark Prater touches is just like dynamite. Uh, it, it it just is. I don't know whether he's that selective or he just gets. What is that? I mean, <laughs> dark, dark I'm gonna, saga. I'm gonna quote John on this, Chuck. He grooves like a big okay. dog. <laughs> he sure does. And I'm not talking about Roman Reigns either. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Anyway, so. do you want to get to uh, track by track, sir? Let's do. Now, I went and I made my notes from the original release. Did you go by the uh, re-release or the original? Uh, I've just been listening to the uh, re-release. Okay. So, uh, Rites of Passage. What are your thoughts of that? It's, it's crazy because, like... I'm not really one for intros, really. Uh, like intros that are generally just like about a minute long that aren't really um, a song per se. But there's something about Rise of Passage where it's just like, it's kind of like, obviously it's building to Heaven Denies, which is the whole point. But it's kind of got this, I don't know what I had to, what have I put in my notes? It has this kind of like, omniscient kind of vibe to it, where it's kind of like, there's a sense of like something's coming and it's not good like he's got this kind of like dread that's like building up you think oh shit so oh, we better run because something's coming to get us um i really like the um the subtle chance that hansi does on this as well i think it really works with like the kind of evil-esque kind of guitar chug that's in there I like it. I didn't I think, think we'd. It, I, think it I didn't works. think we'd have so much to say about an intro. <laughs> that's just. <laughs> but I, I, I got a lot to say about it. This could be the best intro ever, just because. I mean, when you think of other intros, some of them are just very skippable. Like that's just you know track two. I, I couldn't imagine not listening to this before heaven denies. Mm -hmm. This does. This is textbook what an intro should be. This this builds. I mean, it's the the chant is just intoxicating, and you, you can't skip it. It's this. It's as much of a part of the it, of the first song. It's like mes it's mesmerizing, isn't it? Yeah, it's it's and you. I find myself like just chanting that at work, you know, throughout the day. Just it it's could be the best intro ever. It's it's that important and and I couldn't imagine skipping it. Couldn't imagine it. So that 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 brings us quite nicely into heaven denies. I'm gonna uh, wow. <laughs> I'm I'm, uh, I'm just gonna read a line from my uh, 
from my notes here because I, I think it kind of stands stands it pretty much basically basically this song in to to my ears captures both elements from Ice Earth and Blind Guardian. So I've heard a bit of Blind Guardian, but I've not heard loads. So I kind of can recognise it a little bit. So I think this song, they've somehow, like I was saying earlier, they've they've captured both elements of the two guys' individual bands. Like, perfectly. They come together just so well. And it's so melodic. And it has that speed metal thrash guitars right. of like early like storm rider s guy stuff and an incredible vocal performance by hansi with just such like you've got these just thrashing guitars undercurrent but you've got this just like what i want to call like a wave of melody over the top and it just builds on it and builds it. it's oh, fuck me man it's just <laughs> it's a it's an uh, it's an ideal introduction to what a combination of vice death and blind guardian would be it's it's fucking in like I'm I'm listening to to it go. So this is what it sounds like. Like it's it's crazy, man. It's crazy how it it, it has both of those. It's it, it what makes it even even funnier to me thinking about it is when when John talks about power mode and he calls it happy metal. And I'm just like, well, yeah, you've you've combined both mediums it's, it's happy but it's dark at the same time it's weird but there's like this really like I said these these just fucking just blistering guitars underneath with this kind of just kind of like wavy kind of I don't know how to explain it kind of melody and it's so melodic and yeah it's awesome <laughs> I probably can't say enough awesome things about this song you know, it, it started out being my obvious choice as favorite track, but I don't think it is anymore. But it, it's it's a perfect song. Like you said, it's it's so heavy and fast and crunchy, yet it's got that melodic catchiness that is just sometimes I can't hear it just once. I got to start it over and just hit it again. That's how good it is. And, and what I love about this song and I, I can't think right now off the top of my head where it starts off blistering and then ends slow, like acoustically. I love, because a lot of songs do the opposite with the, you know, acoustic kind of build up intro. Yeah, yeah. But this this one ends that way. And I was listening to but it a couple nights ago. And I, I dig that. It's weird as well because sometimes a song could start heavy, have this midsection which is all clean, and then go back to heavy to end. That's why when I, when I first heard this as well, I didn't think the song was over. I thought this was like a mid kind of clean midsection, but then it ended. I was like, oh, <laughs> it's over. <laughs> oh, right. Well, I was I was kind of waiting for it to to start you know yeah, back yeah, out jump, jump, and it just jump kinda, back in. I I dig that. I I totally dig that. This this song's a ten out of ten. If you if you're listening to this and you haven't heard the Demons and Wizards, go listen to this song. I mean, oh my gosh, I it it could be one of my favorite top ten Schaefer songs. <laughs> and I think that's saying a lot. Uh, I'm, so. I'm just glazing over my notes quickly here, and the one thing you're going to notice um, from 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 my kind of thoughts, you're going to hear the word melody a lot and melodic because this album screams all of it um right uh speaking of that uh poor man's crusade you want to go first with that one yeah um i, I don't want to repeat myself but i can't help but <laughs> this album has a formula i'm not saying it as a bad thing but i'm saying it's a good thing like this song like Let's, let's say right we've had heaven denies i've said it's like it's got it's blistering fast heavy guitar parts with like this wave of melody over the top poor man's crusade is really kind of like dark in tone it's got kind of a dark tone to it the guitars are more kind of mid-tempo kind of chunkier but somehow it's still melodic as fuck i don't know how they're doing it <laughs> and it has this it has a it has a great use 
of uh, Hansi, they layer his vocals, and it just sounds incredible how he kind of has different tones, and it just sounds fucking... Hansi sounds so tremendous good. stacked. Yeah, when yeah. When they stack his yeah, vocals, yeah. Oh, yes. it sounds outstanding. 100%. And And sometimes I can't tell whether it's like levels and levels of Hansi or if John's in there at all. <laughs> But like I said, when I hear that stacked Hansi, it's like, good God, that's that's just how. And like I, I, I kind of feel like a broken record on this one too. Um, I, I love the Poor Man's Crusade. It's just a, a cool tune. It's got a great riff, and it's got catchy lyrics. I like I like the way it just grabs you from the beginning, where it says, you know, the Holy Ghost can't help you in, or can't save you anymore, and it just. It grabs you, and it, it's just, his voice is just, it's so, pa- see, I i hear powerful is what I hear. Just his his voice is just powerful to me in this one. I, I love it. Yeah, yeah. It's, um, I think for this whole record, I think there's only literally like a couple of dull tracks that didn't really grab me, but the rest of the record is outstanding. Um, so. And and I'm not, I'm not ashamed to say I have notes because this is it's kind of a new album to me because and and I love that I as this uh, reissue it's it's new to me so I'm totally yeah, yeah. taking it in differently I'm sp- it sounds great on vinyl which is so um, which is quite crazy because we're we're both in the same boat where we can't haven't really we've listened to them I've listened to this album in the past yes. but I've never really like I said dug deep on it. And this this podcast has kind of made me do that, which I'm thankful for because I've kind of found, you know, I've dug deep and found something that's outstanding, you know, as a result. Um, plus, I'm a lot older now, so I think I, I I'm I'm hearing things I wouldn't necessarily hear as a younger guy. Um, when I'm just looking for that heavy, 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 whereas now I'm looking for a bit more substance, like I was saying earlier. Um, it all it all adds to to the experience, man. Um, I'm really looking forward to talking about this next one. Fiddler, oh, fid- that's the, that's the one where I got the biggest notes. Uh, uh, Fiddler, Fiddler on, on the Green. green. Uh, I'm I'm just gonna say if if you want to call this a ballad, because I kind of do, it's probably the one of the best ballads ever written. Period. It's outstanding, and it's probably the 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 best ballad John's ever written in my book wow <laughs> it, to me it's definitely up there with melancholy um to me this is definitely the the sleeper if can it be considered as to me it was a sleeper because it it kind of snuck up on me in my last few listens just how i couldn't wait to get to that track i mean i love every so far i, I love everything but that intro, as I'm listening to the intro, it made me kind of wish that Ice Earth had some more acoustic, melodic intros. Do you agree with that at all? Or this album has quite a lot of melodic intros, from what from my note, yeah, I, like, I'd from like. What I've seen. I'm not saying you have to do it every song, but I wouldn't mind the occasional kind of acoustic little thing just. But anyway, that's that's one thing that made me think of uh, that. Um, his vocal, Hansi's vocal range on this is just kind of where he goes from soft, and then he, you know, he. It's one one of the best on the album for sure. Like it, just one, his one vocal range and just it's, he he definitely has me hanging on every word just with it, the way his his range goes up and down. It, it's my favorite track of the album. I, I can't say en- enough things about this. It's powerful. See, it's perfect. I was going to say, you know, you're talking about it's your favorite. Like, I'm I'm literally like, I might be like, I might be tired between like five tracks on this album. I can't decide. There's, there's some outstanding songs on this record. So I, I haven't really got a favorite. I've got like five on the album that I absolutely adore. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Speaking of one of those, we got the next track, "Blood on My Hands." Holy fuck, this song, Chuck! 
Oh my god. Uh classic Schaefer. Just riffs for days. Riffs for days. Uh it has I love the it has an undeniable an undeniable vocal hook in it as well. That lost in time. I love that. It's so catchy. And I just want to say, bring up Mark Prater, man. The, that chorus, the drums in that chorus, his feet, holy shit. He rips on this song, man. He's great. That's, blood on my hands is def. like I said, there, to me, there's absolutely no filler in this album. Um, that's all I got to say about that one. You might disagree on the filler part. Oh, this yeah, path, it, blood. path of glory. Or are you done with that one? Yeah, I'm done with blood. Yeah, path path of glory. Um, I'm just gonna read my notes because it pretty much sums up my thoughts on this. Uh, there's some there's some great lead parts on this song. Like the lead work is really good, but overall, this is the first song that didn't really grab me like the previous two songs did. Uh, it's not awful. Don't get me wrong. It's not awful by any means. Uh, but I can just take it or I can leave it. It's not really standing out like the rest, like the rest of the album so far. Fair enough. Um, my notes just say I, I love the slow start into the song, and it's a solid song. So probably mid pack for this one, but it's definitely still a great song. Yeah, yeah. Um, that takes. I gotta a... say it's not. It's not awful. Like it's just not as strong as as what came before it on the record. That takes us to Winter of Souls. Um, we got to talk about the variation in vocals because I think his his variation from going into almost a whisper in this song, and then he'll go and just explode into these scream vocals, and then go into more of a mid kind of vocal, and then go into a whisper again. His variation on his vocals are just insane, and the chorus is massive as well. Um, it's weird because. I find the instr- the instrumentation doesn't really do anything incredible. It just works. Do you know what I mean? Um, and I find this song in particular is all Hansi. Like, the vocals carry this song. Okay. Now, to me, as I'm listening to this one, this was the one track that, in my mind, has to sound like Blind Guardian. Because, to me, this was the most non john sounding instrument of the album like when i'm hearing this i i could usually pick out you know that that schaefer signature sound but this one didn't have that so this to me this is the the non i star sounding one so i in my mind i i think that it's got to sound more on the blind guardian end um i love the riff in it it's 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 a it's a good good solid tune but that, that's what I thought about it when I was listening to it. I think I agree there. I think, um, yeah, it doesn't it doesn't exactly scream. That's that's why I was saying the instrumentation doesn't really do anything incredible. It doesn't really scream my stuff to me or anything like that. Not that it, sh- it, it shouldn't either. It shouldn't really scream my stuff. It's just John has this particular playing style that you can't help but associate right. with my stuff. So I guess that's the thing. Um, but yeah, that's what I mean. That's that's why I think. Winter of Souls was a, a thing where the vocals really kind of grabbed me more than anything else. I just love where Hansi's kind of just doing, doing different variations, going down to really low into like a whisper almost. I just love the way he, he, he delivered his voice on, on that song. Um, next up, which is one of, one of my favourites on the record, uh, and probably one there's, there's there's a couple of songs in this album that I, that I, that I, I think really scream my stuff is this next one, the Whistler, um, I think it really pulls from the Ice Earth playbook. I think Schaefer is playing to his strengths. I think going from those kind of like, uh, kind of soft, clean moments and just transitioning into those blistering, fast, just heavy moments. I think that's John at his at his, at his strongest. And I just now think for it's, me, it's I, a really good song. I really enjoyed the harmonies on this one. Um, just broken record on this one. Hansi stack sounds tremendous. It's got, it's got the best of both of them. You got the the Schaefer gallop with the, you know, Hansi's instrument is his vocal range, 
and you put them two together, and it, it's magic. It's just magic. So the Whistler is is a great tune. So love it. It's one of the best on the album for me. Oh, I can't wait to talk about this next one. Basically, the, yeah, next, the, the next three songs. Oh my god. Uh, anyway, uh, <laughs> tear yeah. down, tear down the wall. Right. I've got a thing where if this can open with acoustic guitar and it's got gallops in it, I love the sound of acoustic guitar galloping. So in the background right. of this song, you've got him kind of galloping on guitar. Um, the chorus is huge. Um, it, the chorus is massive. And it's probably one of the best choruses on the album for me. I think that, te- you know, Tear Down the Wall chorus is fucking... And I've, I had this vibe where if you replace... I, I'm, obviously, I'm not saying... I'm not going, oh, he, he, you know, Hansi versus Matt or anything. But if you take out Hansi and put in Matt, I can see this sitting quite comfortably on the Horror Show album. I got super Horror Show vibes on this album, on this song. That is exactly super what my note says. <laughs> horror Show. <laughs> Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Um, you can't really yeah. see it, but it says I get I get a Horror Show vibes. That's what I'm Yeah. Uh, I, I I love this song because it's got I love the intro and I'm listening to it and it's kind of like it reminded me of Damien a little bit but kind of some other aspects of, of horror show and um, the vocals on it are perfect it's I love horror show so <laughs> but it, it doesn't feel like a rip off it's it feels but like the thing is this, this, like, this came out before horror show so it can't it, it can't it, be a rip off anyway it came out before yeah, Horace. Yeah. <laughs> it, it just feels like it. It feels very horror show, and that, that's uh, of course some things are going to remind you. And there's a song coming up that reminds me of another I Stars album. We're going to get to that in a second. So I, I love this hand. I, I love uh, that one as well. But I definitely get that Matt vibe uh, that he could do that one as well. If right. if I could hear Matt do. One Demons and Wizards song, it would be that. Hell yeah. Although Winter of Soul, Winter of Soul sounds how, like a, a cool title for uh, We Are Sentinels. So <laughs> how how crazy is it that we came to the same kind of conclusion on that? Where it's just like I'm I'm, I'm getting horror show vibes here, man. Like I, I totally got it. I was I was sitting here last night listening to it on vinyl. I'm like I'm getting a super horror show vibe. So um, Gallows Pole. Oh my god, man. How fucking heavy is this song? That riff comes yeah. in. Holy fuck. I was, this is my face. Fuck. Like, oh. You know what? This re- this song reminds me of something out of the, out of, uh, the Priest catalog. That riff, just though. Just the heaviness. That riff, yeah, it's, though. It's, it's, he- it's like mid, it's mid-tempo heavy. and just fucking crushing. <laughs> my my notes say heavy heavy love it I, I will say one thing as well on this on this song in particular that lead part that happens like oh, I think it's after the chorus it's like it's lead guitar part it could go it could fit quite nicely on anything that came out on the Glorious Burden album because I, I got a f- I see that it, sound, it sounded like a lead a lead part that John would write you know, not obviously like, it's more like, you know, like more kind of like single note leads rather than a whole twiddly twiddly lead. You know, it's funny you say that because I said it sounds like Priest. You said it sounds like the Glorious Burden. There's some connections there. There's there's one thing that <laughs> p- brings them two together. He's, he's called Tim Owens. Yeah, I think like, I, I think this song, I think it's like, it's, it's, it's the... It's the heaviest song on the record. It's chunky as all hell. The riff is massive. Um, the the yeah, the lead melody is really good, and Hans is great again. He's he's great on it. Like it's so good. I I guarantee that my next purchase will be Blind Guardian. I, I I'm almost guaranteeing it right now. I've already saved. I've already saved the albums that. Richard Clark recommended to me to my Spotify yeah. albums list, so I'm going to jump on those when I've got a bit of free time. Okay. Next up, my, my... L- last summarize. Did you want to start this off? Yeah, when I when I listen to this one, to me it has at the beginning a very burnt offerings feel to it. Did you get that at all? I thought it was quite very spacey and very mystical sounding. It was kind of yeah. The soft parts were um, kind of like 
a bit kind of like yeah like kind of like spacey mystical omniscient like this this song is a journey that a song like this should be. I mean, it's it's a journey. It takes you and the lyrics and the music. I mean, this 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 is so well put together. The, and I um, actually remember. Go ahead. I was gonna say the when when it, when it comes in with those massive guitars, again heavy as fuck. The right. Like Hans's Hans's vocals have been quite melodic through this record, but during that part, he goes proper savage almost, like really savage kind of angry attack. I'm like, that is awesome. That's, that's exactly what I wrote. Angry vocals, but beautiful at yeah. the same time in the same song. So good. And as a side note, speaking of horror show, in the interview disc, John mentions some Demons and Wizards stuff, and he says that My Last Sunrise was the first song that they wrote together. So I kind of think of that when I listen to this song, that, you know, this this masterpiece is is the first thing that they put together. Of course it's, they're going to want to do albums together if they sit down and write write this one right off the it's, bat. It's, it's one of the best on the album for me. It's one of my favorites. Like, like I said, like, basically, uh, Tear Down the Wall, Gallows... Gallows Pole and uh, Mala Sunrise are my favourites on this record. Like they're just back to back, just so good. Um, I, I really like the um, yeah the, the the heavy fast part in in My Last Sunrise is is awesome as well, and uh, it's one of Hans's best vocal. I just think it's just he, he does his vocals on this song in particular are just completely different to what he's done on the on the on the rest of the album. It's like savage, angry, it, but but it's still him. It's, it still sounds just like still kind of it has that kind of operatic kind of power metal kind of styling still in there, but it, it just sounds menacing. I just think it sounds wicked. Love right. it. Love it. Now from there, mine has chant next. Yeah, same. Ch- chant to me is kind of the opposite of. Rites of Passage, I could take it or leave it. I agree. It's, it's um, an outro that it does nothing for me. Yeah, I, I, my, my notes are literally, my uh, my notes just say the album could have gone without this and it would have been fine. Yeah. Now, in the vinyl that we're about to show here in a couple minutes, mine has the cover on there of yeah. uh, White Room. Same. Um, does your CD... I know some CD versions have it, some I don't have, do not. I don't have any of the CD versions, so... Ah, uh, okay. Okay. Oh, wait. Uh, I, wait know I, do have, on... I do have the original CD, if that's what you meant. Yeah. No, it just it doesn't have it, was... it on. It doesn't have it. Yeah. Mine doesn't either. Um, well... I was so happy to finally get that. Uh, and I'm going to get the new CD my, also. I just haven't got it yet. My, my thoughts are very, uh, very short and sweet, so I'm just going to read my notes on this. Uh, I'm not familiar with the original, so I've got nothing to really gauge it by. But I feel that John is always really good at putting his own spin on other people's songs. That being said, I think it doesn't really fit the album sonically and tonally. I know it's a bonus track, but the, the, this I know they're just doing a cover, but it, it sounds completely different from everything else on the album, so it just feels a bit odd in, in its kind of place i don't know that's just my opinion i was familiar with the song so it was cool to know a song it's an old cream song yeah um ace freely from kiss covered it and i didn't like his version but i i love it i think it's a it's a nice bonus like you said it it doesn't it doesn't stack with the rest of the stuff, which is a good thing. When you when your I'm stuff not, is better than the covers, I'm, I'm not I'm not saying that like quality wise. I think they 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 it sounds it sounds fine, but I just think right its tone and sonically it just doesn't. It, it, Their original material is better. Yeah, yeah. Like I don't know. It just so yeah. So. After after listening to this album, and we're not going to talk about the the next one because that's a couple episodes down the line. How excited are you knowing that John is hyping this new one as some of the best stuff he's ever written? Um, 
I'm I'm kind I'm kind of scared a little bit because I. Uh, it's funny because when 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 because people say it all the time, bands say it all the time. Oh, our new album is the best stuff we've done. We're really proud of it. It's our favourite. Blah, blah blah. But when John says it, a guy that gave us the Something Wicked trilogy, the Glorious Burden trilogy, the Stormrider album, Alive in Athens, you know, he gave us all these just insanely, you know, get his bird Divide trilogy. Devour. Oh, fuck off. Okay. <laughs> Like just, just pinpoint. Let's just, let's just pinpoint Gettysburg trilogy, right? The Gettysburg trilogy. I just want to say, undoubtedly, in my opinion, is his best songwriting compositioning of a song he's ever done. Right? Like I don't see him topping that. For him to say that this new Demons and Wizards stuff is the best stuff he's written, is he saying that it tops Gettysburg trilogy? That's a big statement if he is saying that and i'm excited but also terrified to see what it is i'm i'm i'm, I'm so excited and i admit that initially i was thinking when i heard this that uh demons i'd rather have another ice earth album but now i'm actually full-on excited about this i can't i can't there's so much hype going on right now seeing the, the set list from the shows overseas and there's actually a decent uh, video now of a full shot show on YouTube from uh, Russia, Moscow, I think. And it's it's so cool to see. Everything's so hype right now. It's it's an awesome time for John. I'm excited. Now, do you, let's go ahead. I was going to say I was just going to ask you where where you would where you would place this against the Ice Earth catalog. <laughs> that that's a tough one because i think some of the highlights are right up there with anything that they i mean i'd put heaven denies right next to you know burning times it's that good i think that uh fiddler on the on the green is absolutely as good as melancholy if not better if not better, and uh, my last sunrise, amazing. It's got the every feel. I mean, and these songs are all on the relatively short side, which I'm totally okay with. Hmm. But I mean, if um, my last sunrise was six minutes longer, I think we'd be comparing it to Dante's. It's that good. So, um, well, you say we show off our collection or our our collections here because I've got we have very, a lot of input. I've got it, very, it's not going to take long no, either. I've got a very modest collection. Yeah. I'll show this is uh, just the basic CD. This does not have the white room on it. Uh, I have not gotten the uh, remastered yet. I'm waiting for that to, to come still. I have the same. Now, if you are... On the bubble about starting a vinyl collection. Good God, this is a starting point. This book on here is just amazing. Like it's almost like a like like you'd almost pay extra. It's almost like a tour book. Is how beautiful the pictures are, and just just are you kidding me? I love. I hope I, this this I, is something that stays. I have something to mention. I can't help it. Right. That angel on the back, the angel statue on the back of that. Yeah, you look uh -huh. at it. If you squint, it looks yeah. like the, someone doing the devil. It looks like a devil. The 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 the, the, the horns, a hand in the devil horns shape. Okay. If you squint, that's what I see. Because you've got the angel wings. It looks like two fingers. And now, um, that's what I see. for your... am I just talking shit? I'm talking shit. Okay. For... I don't really see it that much. Now, <laughs> I got the uh, FYE exclusive, which is a, a record store here in the U.S., purple. It doesn't really do the uh, engraving much justice on this one, to be honest. I mean, you could see it, but the purple, it just doesn't show. I, mean, I love the color. It goes so great with the vinyl. What color is yours, Jason? I've just got black. Just black. That's right. Yes. 
I was lucky that my uh, the FYE exclusive were both coloreds. So, and I'm not going to tell you what color my other one is. You have to wait for that one. I already know. Okay, so we had a lot of people with things to say about this one. Okay, this is our viewer feedback, and if you, I do have things. Oh, that's say. awesome. Uh, but John do, does think it's a bootleg because it doesn't have the correct logo on it, and plus it's from Russia. And he says a lot of the, a lot of the, uh, a lot of the unofficial shit comes from Russia, apparently, in his opinion. Can I? Uh, it does how does the bit, tape itself look? It does look a bit a bit bootleggy, to be fair. Wow, that does look total <laughs> counterfeit. That's why. I've, that's why I've never unsealed it. Did you get that at a decent price? Yeah, you know, four or five bucks, stuff like that. A side <laughs> note, you don't see many Demons and Wizards cassettes on eBay, and I don't know a song that they sing, but I hate Uriah Heep right now. I'm so sick of looking up Demons and Wizards and seeing that Uriah Heep album. It, it drives me crazy. It's meant to be a good I wish album, I could just... It's meant to be a good I know, album. it's just... I don't know, I, I've not... I hate... I don't even know who they are. Who 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 are a riot heap? I don't I, I don't know it. I know the name, but I you, I you know what? No one cares. It's a nice dirt podcast, not fucking riot heap fucking shit. But <laughs> I know I'm not the only one that's sick of looking up demons and wizards and seeing that. That's why I brought that up. Okay, yeah. viewer feedback. We're going to now go into our Facebook group, and if you have some feedback and you wish you could have been a voice in this podcast, join our Facebook group. And for the next one, you could be a voice. Facebook.com like, slash groups slash podcasting stone is the place to go. <laughs> Loose ass comments. As much as I love Iced Earth, I feel like this is John's best overall album with horror show coming in right after it. That swept, uh, that sweet spot that Chuck sometimes refers to. I feel like this is uh, sandwiched right into that area. Good point. When I first heard it, I was just at the beginning of me getting into Iced Earth, and a friend from high school had ordered the Digipack online and let me borrow it over a weekend, and pretty much soon after it, I bought my own copy. Don't know what else to really say, still in my top ten of all time, even more now with this reissue. Moving forward, I'd say to whatever episode you guys want to do, I'm I will watch them regardless if it's Ice Earth Focus or not, so I'm 100% okay with Side Project. We also, if you're watching this, we also comment about what you thought about Side Projects, Ashes of Aries, Demons and Wizards, and everybody is excited about it. So we're going to see more non Iced Earth albums, but definitely Ice Earth related. Um, Brandon Stone, the first Demons and Wizards album is a classic, one that still stands up to a lot of today's releases, in my opinion. It perfectly captures what an Iced Earth and Blind Guardian mashup would be and set the stage for the what would come, the Crimson King, and is still to come. Heaven Denies is one of the heaviest tracks on any record. Fiddler on the Green is the perfect example of what a band can achieve with the musical minds of John and Hansi melding into one. Tear Down the Wall, Poor Man's Crusade, and The Whistler are favorites, and My Last Sunrise brings back flashes of Dante's Inferno. A wise man kind of just said that a few minutes ago. <laughs> Cap it off with a fun cover of White Room and you have a record that still stands among metal giants to this day. And he said he's all for more podcasts like this. John Baylor, I, I learned of Demons and Wizards through Ice Earth's website in 1999. Back then, I was slowly getting into Blind Guardian, but after hearing Demons and Wizards, I forgot about Blind Guardian. John Schaefer and Hansi make a great team, but wish Hansi cursed re return bass playing and Demons and Wizards because early Blind Guardian had amazing bass guitar work from Hansi. I didn't know Hansi played bass, did you? No. I just assume. I guess I always just assumed that he only sang... Um, Richard Clark. Demons and Wizards is how I discovered my favorite band ever, Blind Guardian. So that's kind of cool to hear the Blind Guardian side of this. 
Um, the friend who introduced me to Iced Earth found Touched by the Crimson King in a CD shop by accident and saw the hype sticker advertising John Schaefer. At the time, neither of us knew Blind Guardian, but I really liked Hansi's voice immediately. Then I went on to listen to more Blind Guardian. I'll always be thankful to the side project for introducing me to Blind Guardian, but the Demons and Wizards albums are always on my rotation too. Um, I heard the debut Demons and Wizards album a few years later, and gradually I did come to prefer it to the Crimson King, but I love them both. Now, um, I'm going to skip a few of these. I had said I'm getting into it, and many suggestions about which gu Guardian, as if the same thing would happen as if people said, you know, what Iced Earth album would you put? Everybody's got their own opinion on that. So thanks for all those people. I'm going to listen to all those. Uh, Sean McConnell says a self-titled Demons is up there with any of John's great works. Three killer albums in a row, Something Wicked, Demons, and Horror Show. That was a killer time to be a fan of John's work. I'm pumped to hear new Demons material as well. As much as a fan, as much as an Ice Earth fan I am, I'm just as much of a Demons fan. So that's that's awesome to hear that. Um, Christopher Ellefson says, Great album, and Hansi always bring very interesting lyrics based on literature, fantasy, and mythology. My favorite song is Fiddler on the Green, perhaps the best ballad John ever wrote, or at least tied with Watching Over Me. I have waited a very long time for the Demons and Wizard episodes, and I love the idea of doing episodes based on side projects. And also the new segment at the start of each episode just to keep everything up to date. There wasn't much going on today. That's why we didn't really talk about much. Um, Aaron Philpot, I was going to ask about the non-Ice Earth albums last night right after I bought the Ashes of Aries self-titled vinyl. Aaron, that's, that's in the works as well. Uh, Remy Davignand. I discovered the Demons and Wizards by a mistake in 2004 when I searched on internet on the internet some Ice Earth song, and I discovered them uh, during the summer and went to hear the first song I've heard from Demon and Wizard was My Last Sunrise. Um, lately, I've discovered that was something else, and with the second CD came out, I have bought each album. For me, it's a classic because it helps was another step to process to discover metal. So that was some of his introduction to metal. And he definitely agrees. Uh, and he would actually be up for a Blind Guardian episode also. So that's, that's interesting. And uh, the last one, which is, I'm kind of disappointed, Adam Ortiz is usually first, but he's the last one. <laughs> All I can say is I love demons and wizards and I'm incredibly lucky to see them in August. And yes to non I start releases getting an episode two, maybe follow up interviews. So we're hoping to have uh, Adam on after his concert and after Jason's to do a live review of that coming soon, hopefully. So thanks to everybody that took the time for the feedback. And uh, any closing words, Jason? I just want to say, like, um, to, to think, yeah, this album is 20 years old, and it's still, wow. sound, and, and it, 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 it stands the test of time so well, and uh, I forget who said it, I forget the person in the comments, but someone's saying, like, it's, it's, it's in that sweet spot of I Surf releases, what, you know, in John's work, where you've got, you know, Dark Side or something wicked. Um, Demons and Demons and, and Horror Show, live, live in Athens Horror Show, and yeah, it, 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 I listening to it today. I've listened to it three times over the last couple of days, but really like listening to it and taking notes, like listening to it, like it's probably one of the best metal albums of the nineties. It's up there for sure, and uh, yeah, I think it's got some just outstanding moments so I'm literally I'm listening to it I'm going this is great and I think yeah uh, I 
it's a must listen for anybody that loves ice turf or loves heavy metal in general it's it's a must a must listen now and we had mentioned that neither one of us have the new cds yet but there's a couple demos on there also on the on the first one the second ones that got a, a second full disc they had a lot more stuff for the second one yeah i watched their um their kind of hype video them hyping up the reissues now talking about how on touch by the crimson king there is an unreleased song called uh yes until she came i think that's what it's called and we know that song do we yes that is the music to uh uh it's on uh, crucible of man it's uh keep talking i'll tell you in a second <laughs> yeah they're talking about but it, some of the uh stuff they've gotten for that for the bonus stuff on that record reissue um i think it's a gift or a curse I think that's what it is. It's a gift or a curse music with different lyrics. And Hansi singing. And Hansi singing. So John kind of took it and used it later. That's very strange because when we spoke to him about how he kind of like separates his Ice Earth musical mind from Ice Earth, he says, if the vocal melodies don't come to him straight away, he'll give it to Hansi to work on the vocal melodies. So, for for that for that to start out as a demon song, and then end up as an ice stuff song is very strange. From what John's told us in terms of how he kind of decides what song is going to be for what project, it may it might have been a thing where they just didn't have enough room, and they thought the album was, you know, maybe they thought it was filler at the time. Doesn't matter. I love the gift gift or a curse is one of the. Yeah. Other really good songs that, on that on Crucible. So out of not many good songs. Century Media knocked it out the building with these re releases. Yep. Just the CDs look amazing. The artwork on the, the, the we'll get to the, oh, uh, like, the Crimson I've, on Sorry, go on. Go ahead. I was gonna say we'll get to the Crimson artwork and stuff down the road. The uh yeah, the the the, the the whole kind of presentation I've harped on this already, but like the presentation of the, of the vinyl release in particular is outstanding, and the the fact that we've kind of embraced this the, the music on it as well, like where I've really kind of dug deep on this and really embraced what what the music is. You know, the, the music, the artwork, and the, the whole package, everything you're getting with this release is outstanding. And yeah, uh, the marketing the marketing plan they had for this was perfect to. I mean, you could still get the uh, the releases through eBay, the, like the CDs, but the vinyl, like I said, is, is a $100 purchase just six months ago. So to have them back out at this time and these, these re-releases are getting people into it and they're excited. And these same people that are buying these remasters are getting excited. They're going to the shows. You know, they're going to be right there pre-ordering whatever the third album is going to be called you know i'm i'm really glad um that we're digging into these these albums now because obviously i'm I'm going to see them at the end of the month in london and i didn't want to be one of those people that turn up that don't know the fucking songs and just stand there you know and, and you're like, only singing along to burning times <laughs> yeah and uh yeah i didn't want to you know i'm i'm fortunate to to be going because it's I'm, I'm guessing it's sold out already but i'm fortunate i'm going uh, i'm hopefully gonna you know meet up with john and hansi or whoever try to you know, try to meet up with them at least get some stuff signed have a little chat and stuff and hopefully get there early enough to be at the front and just get into it and stuff so that should be interesting should be a fun night now i'm more i'm more than it's more i'm definitely more excited now because now I'm, I'm i at least i i can listen to these albums and really get into the into the back catalog and i can, I know I can honestly say with this re-release this is two albums that are definitely going to go into my regular rotation absolutely yeah. and i'm kind of guilty of uh sons of liberty too I uh, not that I don't like it. I just haven't 
given its due, so I can't wait to dig into that one. <laughs> yes. You Sons of Liberty is very, is very political, so it's going to be a struggle for me because I'm not really into politics in my music. So it's going to be very difficult for me to really... Because there's, cause there's a lot... I know we're not really talking about it now, but the problem I have with Sons of Liberty is there's a lot of points where it's just talking. And that oh. kind of takes me out of those records. Anyway. Go buy this. It's got many different colors, many different versions. It's beautiful. I, I mean, I, I sat there and looked at this the whole time that I was listening last night. So if you're looking for a first vinyl to buy, go buy this. Or or the CDs are awesome too. Uh, yeah, John John and Hansi clearly have a beautiful a beautiful friendship, and they've created some of the most beautiful and epic music you could hear. That have come straight from the 1990s, and they still it still sounds relevant now. It's fantastic. Go buy it. One of my favorite vinyls in terms of its physical media. One of my favorite purchases of the year. Probably my favorite album of the year, even though it came out 20 years ago. <laughs> it's probably my favorite album of the year so far. So, yeah. Check it out. There's an abundance of colors. Thanks, John. Yes. <laughs> Bank account's crying. Uh, I've just got the black, but there is green. There's a red vinyl. There's a purple. There's it's like a silver. There's purple. There's, there's black. There's... There's loads. There's there's a lot of really cool colors. E- eBay or uh, Century Media. There's tons of. Go go buy it physically. Worth every penny, guys. Worth every penny. Yes. <sighs> and for double vinyl, you can get them mostly under thirty bucks. So that's a lot fairer than the picture disc of old for a hundred. So I'm so happy that's being. And you know what? For everybody, don't forget. Alive in Athens is coming reissue too. Just think of how that's going to hype up, get that album going again. So some cool reissues coming. That's going to be expensive though, man. I can't see how it's going to be affordable. Hopefully, there's only going to be two versions. I'm hoping for a there, black and a, and a blue. There will. That's all. I There'll be at least five oh, well, different just, colors. <laughs> just two. Just two different. It's a, it's a centimeter cash grab. It's going to be about like five. <laughs> oh well you know it's true search your feelings Chuck you know this to be true oh it's true it's damn, damn true, true. <laughs> <laughs> take us home Jason ladies and gentlemen thank you for watching we have been podcast in stone I've been joined as always by the incomparable Chuck Hoskins Thank you for watching our Demons and Wizards. I want to say retrospect, but it's more of a kind of review from us because it's kind of like the first time we've really kind of delved into these, this album in particular. But yeah, uh, the second album is coming up. Uh, it, I don't think it's going to be next episode because we want to have a bit of a gap in between. Yeah, But it's coming, so look out for that. Uh, yeah, there's there's so much to get, to get onto, Chuck, man. There's, you know, we are sent yeah. those episode Ashley varies there's all sorts of stuff Luke Luke Appleton can't Luke wait Appleton. to do a review on that and Witherfall yeah right Witherfall my co-host here is like the number one fan but yeah yes <laughs> Witherfall is coming up so anyway With that being... hit subscribe check out our Facebook punch that like button that does help Check out our Patreon. Throw us a buck or two if you can. It goes a long way. It helps to no end. Until next time, guys. Thank you for watching. Subscribe. We're almost at 500 subscribers. Yes. That would mean the world, man, if we hit that. Uh, yeah. On the road to 500 subscribers. Help us get it. We're so close, man. I think we're like 10, 10 subs away. So we're so close. Subs. Help us get there. And you will win nothing at all, but just our cra- <laughs> just our gratitude. Anyway, thanks for watching. We have been podcasting stone. Stay metal because metal lives, my friends. See you later. Mm-hmm.